next speaker is someone who is very dear to Camden's heart. She's a councillor for Camden. She's an environmental activist and she hopes to run again for the Green a candidate to be London Mayor. Please put your hands together for Sean Berry! Hi, um, thank you for having me. It's absolutely extraordinary to be part of this um, and an honour to be here. Um, I'm a politician. I'm, I think I'm the only British politician they've allowed on the stage today. Um, I'm a Green councillor here in Camden. I am hoping to be the Green candidate for Mayor of London uh, next year, but I'm not here to tell you uh, to, to vote for me. Um, I'm also a campaigner and um, I've been in the Greens for 14 years and I've been uh, a campaigner for almost as long. I started out fighting the four by fours um, and I've done a lot of other things too. Um, and my politics and my campaigning has always been inspired by, for want of a better word, dissent. Um, and in Britain, our history of dissent and radical change is frankly admirable. As Owen said and, he, and Neil just talked about, the, the many different people making Britain their home have created the birthplace of trade unions, cooperatives, the home of the NHS, and were the inspiration for democratic movements around the world. From the levellers of the Civil War, through the Chartists, the Campaign for Women's Suffrage, the peace, anti-apartheid, environmental movements, the struggles of radical groups are the history of our country. And I'm incredibly proud and sentimental about that history. Um, and uh, I loved the Olympic opening ceremony. I know it was cheesy. I love everything that Frank Cottrell Boyce writes, and he makes me cry almost constantly so I was more or less destroyed by the fact that he put this history that I care about into that ceremony so well and in that ceremony he picked out one passage from Shakespeare and put it in the mouth of Brunel we're in a railway uh, setting here um, and, the, and the, the bit of the speech was uh, from Caliban in act three of the Tempest in which he says be not afeard the land is full of noises and uh, here in the Roundhouse today, we're surrounded by the voices and noises of people from Camden. And here in the Roundhouse, uh, there was a production of The Tempest as part of the Cultural Olympiad in 2012. So hopefully, the voices of the real actors who spoke those words are here in the room with us today as well. And, and now again, true to our history, it's our island's noises from the people and from the grassroots that are taking the Westminster bubble completely by surprise, again and again at the moment, starting a year ago, almost exactly, with the incredible participatory surge of radical debate and thought that came with the Scottish referendum, continuing with the huge leap in the membership of my party with the Green Surge, and now with a flood of supporters joining Labour to vote for a radical former anti-apartheid campaigner who's pro-peace anti-austerity to lead their party. I mean, I don't agree with Jeremy Corbyn on everything, and I've, I've talked about how the need for voting reform, deeper changes to democracy, um, needs to be more of what he does if he wins. But I've also talked about how exciting it is that so many people are getting involved in deciding the future of the Labour Party. And, and like Owen said as well, they're not excited by his personality or the idea that he personally will save them. It's by the ideas that he represents. These people are relishing the opportunity to have a more radical debate about the crisis we face. I'm I mean, I'm a Green, but I'm proud of all of you who've signed up to Labour to vote for something with a whiff of dissent. It's really, really good. Um, and this new excitement is reflected not in just in party politics and internal party contests and referendums. It's actually everywhere on the ground now. Um, it's our turn to be inspired by democratic movements. Syriza and Podemos are amazing. Uh, and looking around us, we can see citizens all over London, all over our city, springing up to challenge, resist, protest, and create new ideas for using their power. 
in London, we are a city of noises now. Um, and we're noisy because we're angry. We're angry with our lazy, disinterested mayor. We're in, angry with the lack of democracy, the way our streets and our estates are being rebuilt on a model dictated by big corporations, not the wishes of its citizens. We're angry at our filthy air, our eroded public spaces, and we're angry at the way inequality has grown to Victorian levels that Brunel would have recognized. In London, more than anywhere else too, inequality has grown uh, ridiculously. The richest people enjoy a steady increase in wealth. The rest of us have low wages, falling wages in some cases, expensive housing and draconian tests to get even the most basic levels of social support. As citizens ask of London, our response to this, yes, it's angry, but it's more constructive now than ever before. It's so much more constructive than a riot. All over the city, we've got a revival in campaign groups and activists challenging the current mayor, challenging their local councils and the government's injustices on housing, policing, we just heard, wages, jobs, our rights and safety and the environment we live in. And we're also seeing a revival in something else, which I think is really important. It's solidarity not only for activists working on the same cause, but between activists making the links between their different causes. It's the kind of solidarity we saw in 1984 when lesbians and gays support the miners made the links between the struggles of the miners and their struggle for equality and the common harassment and suppression they faced. More history of which we can be proud and, and also history here in Camden. The Pits and Perverts benefit concert was held at the Electric Ballroom just down the road, so you could probably hear the noises from there in this space as well. Um, I am really hopeful. All of this revival under another Tory government in activism, solidarity, radical debate, people willing to join causes and parties. I'm hopeful we can wrestle next year's London election, as Neil mentioned, um, away from the horse race, the tribalness of personalities, and make it something wider, involve all of London in deciding how we want to run our city. And groups like Take Back the City and Compass organizing this event, they're already doing this kind of work and they're adding to the hope that I have that this is possible. I think, in fact, given recent events, it would be somewhat unusual if 2016 in London wasn't an election in which something unusual happened. And we need to prepare for it now. I think this event is very well timed. I think those of us who are politicians need to work with people who aren't in parties, work with people with, from other parties. And everyone on the streets needs to get involved with campaigns like Take Back the City and build a vision for what London can be like um, that whoever becomes mayor, however the campaign goes, and something weird is going to happen, they can't ignore that vision. We can determine what London is like after next May. So yes, I, I'm, I think we can do something together next year. I think we can, we can not only work together, take over City Hall, but give it back to the people too. It's our city and it's our London and we deserve it. Thank you very much.